Okay, so yeah, this is the last the last Friday of the year. Happy New Year and the uh, last Siebel Friday of Siebel for Siebel 22. So let's uh, see what we have today. We, we have or uh, over the past two months because there was no Friday, Siebel Friday in November. Um, I was traveling to Paris and Frankfurt in, in, in November and December uh, to the Oracle Applications Unlimited days in, in Europe, throughout Europe. So I was in Paris and Frankfurt. It was really great to meet uh, a lot of people. Uh, there were close to 200 people at each event, I guess. And all uh, Oracle customers and partners and of course Oracle people and was able to meet, uh, yeah, for example, Brian Kelly came over from the US. And, uh, we had a great time discussing, well, the present, the present state of Siebel and the future of Siebel and uh, got a little bit inspired along the way. But let's start with, um, let me share my screen and let's start with the usual round of what's new in the latest uh, Siebel monthly updates. So here we go. Should see the screen right now. So we start with 22.11 because we missed that. Uh, we didn't have a Siebel Friday to discuss it. So um, I'll do it very quick. Um, so 22.11 had the main features that were included is the Open API 3.0 support for the inbound describe requests. Then uh, some nice uh, enhancements for the test automation platform and a new responsibility uh, along with other updates. So let's see a bit of details here. So in the REST API, there's constant movement. There's like no, no monthly update that doesn't make tiny little changes to the REST API. And this one is a quite big one because now you can use that describe URL that existed before uh, and that got you until 22.10, got you a Swagger 2.0 description of, for example, the business component or the business service. So you can import it somewhere else, uh, like in Postman or in any other tool that can read Swagger 2.0. And Open API 3.0 is now the quasi standard and now Oracle has added support for that. So 22.11 and higher, if you do describe without anything else, you get OpenAPI 3.0.1 actually, maybe a later version. If you still want the uh, old Swagger, you have to add OpenAPI version equals two to your URL. Uh, test automation is also an area where there are quite a lot of enhancement throughout the past 12 months. And one of uh, 2211 was uh, an exciting one because Oracle added the ability to run parallel batch executions or master suite executions, uh, run multiple of these master suites in parallel on a single machine where, where you have DSA installed. So it must be the, the typical Windows machine set up with DSA and the browser and the browser driver, but it can run multiple sessions in parallel. And that's, of course, a big time saver and a big resource saver. You don't need those many machines. You, you need half your machines or one third of your machines. So that's a great addition. It's driven by a new parameter, uh, dash dash parallel equals N. That means a number. Uh, maximum number of the test executions to run. So you have to enter those test executions as usual, set them to scheduled. And then if you have like in the example, have three of them or more, three will run in parallel. Of course requires current DSA version and the Jenkins plugin must also be updated. And another one on test automation and also very interesting from a testing perspective is the ability to invoke the Siebel inbound REST API from within a test script step. So there's a new keyword called invoke REST. So I'm not sure if you work with test automation, but there's a 
Invoke Web Service has been around for quite a while to invoke the SOAP API of Siebel. And now you can invoke the REST API, for example, to, well, look up records after they've been created, verify some data, uh, create some test data, delete test data using REST calls. It's probably much more convenient than to record the creation of test data and then uh, use it. You just, plainly speaking, import it through REST. So that's just some use cases I, I think are quite interesting. Uh, this, this one, let's cut it short. There's a new responsibility coming uh, with the repository upgrade. It's called product authoring super users. And it's for those situations when uh, users have locked uh, products, for example, any versioned object, you know, those products, signals, uh, classes, etc. And users have locked them and well left left for the holiday and <laughs> the lock flag is on and you can't unlock it. So now you have a responsibility you give to certain super users and now they can unlock uh, versioned objects that are locked by other users or even uh, work with the REST API and import product models, etc. Okay, and uh, the repository upgrade, which is the optional utility you run after an update and which brings you all the repository changes and C data changes and schema changes that Oracle may makes optional. Uh, this utility now has gotten an update too, and it has a new parameter minus nine. And minus nine is the parent workspace where it will import the repository stuff. And that can no longer be main, by the way. So you have to create a custom integration workspace for the purpose of running the repository upgrade that is more secure. It separates the changes into a, let's say, current integration workspace rather than you pump them right into main and you get all kinds of uh, conflicts, etc. So you can analyze those conflicts in a safe integration workspace before. Okay, uh, this one is about the SeepDev CLI and repository upgrade utilities that run as part of an up update and they use automatically generated CFG files or SeepDev CLI. And it looks much like a Siebel Tools CFG file because SeepDev CLI is basically Siebel Tools headless in headless mode. And if you look into these files, a few versions ago, maybe Oracle has started to add parameters, enable personalization and enable runtime events to false. So when you start, basically start an application session using SeepDev CLI, it does not trigger any runtime events or personalization rules, which could cause some trouble. So I, th I think they turned it off because there were quite a lot of bugs reported as customers having custom runtime events, of course, etc. All right, brings us to 22.12. And uh, there are two main new features in 22.12, one more for the REST API and one, a very big one for order management. So, and uh, an update to the security guide, as you can see on the slide. So the REST API, a feature for 22.12 is the ability to, well, first use the import wizard to read a JSON file or, you know, open API 3 or Swagger 2 file and generate the proxy business service and integration objects, and then change those integration object references in the business service method arguments to, for example, use existing integration objects. And question is why would you do that? Because you might have just imported a Siebel service description, for example, Siebel account or some other EI data synchronization service, and they have perfect integration objects to work with. But the wizard generates a new one and you would have to use data mapper to, well, map it down to the real integration object. So that is until 2211, 2212 and higher. You can just change the integration object to an existing one. Of course, the data must match it. And then there's no need to use data mapper and it's overall a uh, time saver.
And the big one in order management is big uh, as for the number of shear objects that you get in the repository. You have to run the repository upgrade and you get new workflows, you get updated workflows, business components, views and applets. And, and the main view that is imported is shown on the screenshot here, is an explorer or hierarchy view that when the quote or order has multiple line items that are customizable, shows all these customizable products in a single view, you can click them and use the UI for those customizable products. So you don't have to go one product uh, after another. So all the customizable products are visible in one single view. And that's quite an achievement, I think. So there's a lot of background work and uh, probably a lot of conflicts with all the updated business components and workflows. So you have to be careful when you apply that repository upgrade. But if you work in the order management uh, realm, then that's probably quite an interesting one. Okay, and uh, the final thing uh, I got to say about uh, the recent updates uh, is happened to me when I updated my enterprises, then I noticed that something was off in the uh, SMC the, the the security profile, the gateway security profile was no longer visible. There was an error message. And Oracle tells customers to fix that by, well, creating a new security profile, but you cannot do that <laughs> if you can't log into safe mode, right? Or sometimes you're locked out of SMC because the security profile is, well, damaged or missing, etc. So as a reminder, if you have set up your enterprise. Before you do anything else, go to the settings page and set those gateway safe mode credentials. It's the current user and you can select any password and then you use safe mode HTML uh, special URL so you can log in. And the only thing you can do after logging in with safe mode, with the safe mode page, you can replace the gateway security profile with a new one and repair it. So that's something I recommend always. Don't forget to set those safe mode creden credentials so you're not in trouble when SMC uh, misses that security profile for whatever reason. All right, so any, any feedback from your side, any questions, speak up or put them in the chat. No, uh, really. Uh, the whole exposition you you you, you do, and uh, I, I utilize just the the half of the all the things you expose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, yeah, I like the like the integration workspace and and, and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it's right. always interesting to up to date. <laughs> Yes, exactly. So this is what Oracle delivered in the past two, mo two monthly updates. So when you apply 22.12, you have it. Of course, if you're not using, let's say, order management, then, well, it goes over your head. You don't have to use it, right? Um, okay, uh, brings me to the, uh, well, the Siebel Hub uh, page or uh, what's it called actually profile or channel on the, in YouTube uh, where well you will find this video in a few in a few days and since November we actually had a, quite a lot of videos uploaded so the last the Siebel Friday for October and then you see there's eight eight videos uploaded including information about that we just discussed about 2211 2212. Uh, but also a uh, Siebel 22 highlights, so summary of all Siebel 22 highlights. Uh, very short version. If you if you plan to update, for example, from Siebel, I don't know 20, 20 or 21, then it's, get, you get a good overview of what's what what you can expect. And uh, the last video I uploaded was a sneak preview of. DevPop's 
23.1, so the, the next planned DevPops release. So the next, pa next part of this um, uh, Siebel Friday, I will dedicate to a demonstration of the planned features for DevPops. So I've opened the DevPops page in GitHub. And if you watch, if you watch my videos and, and follow the Siebel Fridays, you probably heard about DevPops. It's a strictly educational, not for use in any mission critical environment. It's a demo of what you can do with Siebel Open UI. And it also modifies Siebel web tools, which is quite illegal in terms of uh, Oracle support. So please take it with a grain of salt. And it's just showcasing what you can do or what is possible with Siebel with OpenUI and Java, uh, JavaScript and CSS. So for the 23.1 release in January, um, I have quite a list of features planned and they're all more or less implemented so I can demonstrate them. And many, many of them revolve around web tools. So there's a lot of web tools hacks coming up now. So be careful, take that with your grain of salt, as I mentioned. So here's my test machine. And here I am in web tools. So the first feature I want to demonstrate. Uh, so the, the person who actually inspired me to do it is not here today. Um, but uh, there is, you might, you might see it already. There is a applet of, in, in the workspace dashboard, sorry, in web tools or in any workspace dashboard, uh, there is a list of workspaces on the left, the versions in the middle, and on the right, there's the object list for that workspace and version objects that have been modified, inserted, updated, or deleted, or deactivated. And well, normally you don't see a blue object name and a clickable object name, it's just a list applet. But the new DevPops feature makes it clickable. So by, you see from the mouse tooltip, you can navigate with left click. So simply go to that object and right click display more options. So let's see if we have something simple. Let's, let's go to the main workspace. Uh, there's a there's the contact list applet, and I currently have a an editable workspace open. So if I left click the object, it simply navigates there, keeping the workspace o opening. Well, whatever view you want. So this is for for list applets. I thought it's worthwhile opening the list columns list, so you can start working with the list columns. But you can choose. So let's try another one. Uh, let's find maybe there's the repository upgrade, uh, 22.10, so but that a lot of workflow processes have been implemented. So let's click on one of these workflow processes. So it's a classic Siebel navigation thing. It looks up that workflow process and it obviously open, opens it, it's a big one, opens it into, in the editor. So that's, that's nice. It's a navigation thing. Let's go back to workspace, or to the workspace dashboard. So now if I right click that object, I get the, all the workspaces where this object has been touched. If there are a lot of them, you can search. Now like 2210 or so, you can do a quick search. So now we have, uh, this is the currently open workspace. Main three is the currently selected workspace. And there are two other workspaces where this has been, uh, well, touched or created or modified. So let's say this developer workspace here, I can select it and I can click select to, well, let's see what Hi, happens. Alex. Can I have a short, short question here? Yeah, uh, sure. the list is only showing the uh, workspaces which are delivered already or showing the workspaces from other developers. So maybe we can see the, the conflicts here also. Well, you can't see any conflicts because you have to deliver to get conflicts or rebase. 
but you you would see any other workspace where this object is being worked with. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's where it is touched. I, I call it touched. Uh, somebody has touched it in that workspace. So so you see when you click select, you basically do the query for the workspace version and select the object in that workspace. And so now I've selected it, or I could select any other workspace really, and also click go. So if it's not the current workspace, which it is not, it will open that workspace and open the object. So that's quite a complicated procedure, believe me. <laughs> and it doesn't work all the time. Uh, but it looks like it manages it just now, yeah. Okay, so you notice that uh, the other workspace is opened and the, the workflow is now opened in that workspace. So let's try one more time with anything else. So let's go to main. Let's go back here. Doesn't have to be a workflow all the time. Can be, well, there's an alt, there's an applet. So right clicking the applet, we'll see all the workspaces where it has been touched, or we can also open it in the currently open workspace. Let's try main three. So I want to see this applet in main version three. So I click go. And it should well, hopefully switches to main version three and opens the applet. Let's see. Uh, you know, web tools is like, sometimes it re reloads the whole session when you change the workspace, which it just did, but it's now main three, comes back after the reload and I'm not touching the mouse, believe me. Looks up the applet and yeah, touchdown. So it's a form applet, so you see the controls. So it's, you you can basically change the code and put in whatever view you like to navigate. Okay, so um, so that's the enhancement here in this area where you have the uh, object list. Uh, there's another enhancement, which is if you click on the workspace icon on top, you get a list of all the modified objects in that workspace. Now, of course, this sounds, so that is main three and there's, that's the list. And yeah, it's quite a lot of stuff that was edited or delivered into main three because it was a big uh, repository upgrade. Uh, so you can also benefit from the search like SISOM. Okay, you see there's, an integration object. And so this is basically a list you can open anytime. So let's let's close the workspace dashboard. You can still open this list and search for an object. And let's say a web template. So yeah, you can simply go there. Okay, so you see the web template open. So you can keep this like so, as a, as a navigation I, a navigation helper. You don't have to go to the workspace dashboard all the time. It's just, let's say this link here, select what you want to work on and it looks it up for you. So it's, um, yeah, let's say a workspace dashboard, a mini, minimized workspace dashboard or whatever, what you call it. So that's That's quite handy too. So let's go to that workflow. Which one was it? Dynamic pricing procedure. Okay. And let's close it for the moment. So if you are looking at the list of things, uh, one of the, these primary lists like workflow processes, and you want to see the history of one specific object, I, I have this, um, yeah, what, what do you call it? Alarm clock button, which opens the, the more detailed history for changes for that object. So that is, in main three, it was delivered from 
the integration workspace and that's the developer workspace. And because it was delivered, we can also find, you see, for example, the, the workflow step on IO argument, etc., has a new search specification. So all the changes that were made during delivery are visible here. Of course, there can be quite a lot of information. It's just from the database, whatever is in the database is listed here. So that workflow was under quite some changes in the repository upgrade. So that's some, some information that you can just show for any object. Like let's go to an applet. So this is the, the workspace history of that applet. Okay, uh, let me open a workspace that is editable for the next demo. That's just plain web tools functionality, nothing fancy here. <laughs> just opening a workspace, still should work. Okay, so it's quite a lot of stuff here. Yeah, there's a workflow process. So now I've already opened the workspace and now I want to go to that workflow process. Of course I can do it using the new feature. Oops, okay, it messed up. So it can happen. That's why it's not safe for work, you know, right? So let's try again. Second time's the charm usually, yeah, it goes wrong. Okay, so this workflow I've modified a little bit and it's now editable, editable workspace. I added a business service. And you know, you have, if you have a sub process in, even in web tools, you can double click and it opens that sub process. That's quite a nice feature, right? Not in new tab, that's not available, but it still opens it. And when you close it, you kind of, that's just history back. It goes back in the browser history. So it opens the old one. So I thought, why not do this for business services as well? So you see, when I click this business service, it already changes color. So you see it becomes a little bit active more active. So I can now double click it to navigate to that business service, or I can right click it. If it's an eScript service, I can see the code. So let's see if right click first. Okay. You see, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I'm using the server script debugger. So it requires a modern version of, C, of web tools where you have that script debugger and loads that business service in the script debugger. So you can preview, literally preview the code. You can't edit it here, but you can see it. Or when you double click it, then you, you open the business service. And if it's a scripted business service, you are taken right to the editor. Right? And the editor has a new icon, the, the ladybug. I can do the same thing right from the eScript editor open the script debugger and load the load the method that you have selected. So if I select another method like this one, uh, it saves me a few clicks, right? So I think that's quite a time saver. Okay, let's go to business service one more time. So you also notice there's, uh, well, two things. There's a new icon. I, I just, I hated that asterisk icon. <laughs> uh, so I replaced it with a nice pencil icon if, in the writable column. So that should be everywhere now. Let's check business component. Yeah, that's just a nicer, a nicer looking icon. And there's a button for every scriptable object like application, applet, business component, business service, there's an open server script editor. So before you had to go to the menu, you know, scroll down, 
click edit server scripts, well, there's just a button. Does the same thing. Okay. And again, you can do the, um, get the workspace history. Not much to see here. And final, final thing for web tools here, if you really want it, for example, in integration objects, you know, when you generate integration objects, you can't do it in web tools. Um, you do it in Siebel tools. Still at it. <laughs> it's uh, end of 2022. You can't, uh, yeah, generate integration objects in web tools. But what you can do is, of course, work with integration objects. And uh, usually what you do sometimes is uh, deactivate multiple fields or activate multiple fields in one go. Like, like this, there are a lot of inactive fields. Let's say I want to activate all the fields. So I can press control A, but there's no change records, right? In web tools. Uh, but it happens the applet still supports the method. So I created a button in the toolbar, which pops up change record for this uh the the 38 the row counter is, is i I, in, I injected that so that's officially not supported by so be, be very careful uh, but it works as expected because it's just a plain siebel functionality let me just and change the comments to siebel friday so it's another a change we see yeah say siebel friday all over all the records have been changed. Okay, so change record I always missed in web tools, so I added back <laughs> illegally. So, um, oh, yeah, do, there you see another feature. <laughs> okay, so uh, there's this pointer go to next record. That applet on top, I call it a three, three applet view. We see the parent, you see the child, integration components, and the grandchildren. You can actually navigate in that parent, like in the application, you know, go to the ne next record, go to previous record. Not sure if that's ever useful, but if it's available, there are now two, two hands pointing in the direction where you can go uh, sideways, more or less. All right, uh, let me log out of tools. Questions most welcome, guys, yeah, if you, if you have any. No, I don't. Okay, how, how do you like it so far? <laughs> yeah, of course. Is, it, is there anything useful for, as a developer? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here. Here in the application, my, my test application. And uh, let's start with that. So DevPops adds the, uh, I think I have to navigate again. Yeah, DevPops adds the clicker. Well, it adds the uh, workspace icon. So that's um, driven by DevPops, but now it's clickable again and shows the, the same list, the modified objects for the current workspace. So main six, of course. And of course, what you do with it, uh, the, could be applets, you can't navigate to an applet, but you can open the applet in web tools. That's what you might want to do. That contact list applet, for example, it says open in web tools in the tooltip. So let's let's click it. And of course, it doesn't work. Yeah. That's a demo effect, right? That's <laughs> okay, let me let me reload the browser. Man, worked all day. Worked all day. <laughs> okay. Let me log in again. So. Now, if I click that, yes. So it loads web tools. I have an SSO version of web tools, uh, fake fake SSO, I call it. 
So, but it works with a login page as well. So it opens web tools in another tab. Of course, only works in a development environment, as you can imagine. And opens that workspace and opens the object. There you go. Voila. Okay, now let's click that application. So once web tools is open, we still have communication with the tab. So we can tell the tab to navigate to that application. There you go. All right. So that's something I always wanted to have. And <laughs> uh, one of my customers, they tried to do it and I was, well, kind of uh, intrigued. Is it possible to tell web tools what to do from another tab? And apparently you can. And sorry to ask, how is that implemented? So how can you control the second tab from the first one? Uh, that's, yeah, let me, sh let me, let, let's go to the code. <laughs> So that's um, so. There's a function Are you using the Chrome Web Driver, or uh, no, not at all. It's it's actually it's it's plain simple. It's it's simple JavaScript. So you once you if you do window open, mm -hmm. uh, you know most browsers when you add blank, it's a new tab. That's a default for most browsers, but depends on the user setting. But you get a variable back, which is basically the document in the in the new tab. So now you see that, that variable SWT I use to wait for the dashboard view being open. You see also it's it's the Siebel app, but in the other tab. Alexander? Yeah. Then, then you have to say. Then you have to do some changes in the SMC to have two. To uh, do two no. No. Not a, well. I, I I created an SSO enabled web tools for test for faster testing, so I don't have to log in all the no, time. Okay. But you can use the plain regular web tools. Uh, as you notice, the URL does go to view, so it opens web tools in the dashboard view. Uh, that's the no, trick. Please. That's the trick, basically. So I, I can wait. I literally set an interval. So it's it's very low level. I mean, I'm not a good JavaScript programmer. So I learned JavaScript 25 years ago, and set interval was just is the one I use. <laughs> no, no promises, whatever, you know. Uh, so I just set an interval and wait for the dashboard view to be literally open, available, and then I clear the interval. So I say, okay, I'm done waiting. And then I call, I call the same function again. So it skips the first step, goes to the second step. Yeah, query that workspace. So it, you see, S S W T dot is even the session storage you can call on the on the other tab. So, so everything you would do in a normal Siebel Open UI session, you now do with a with a prefix. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks for showing. This. Yeah. So so yeah, that's. But uh, it it looks quite spectacular, really. And, and um, let's say you're in a in a few. Uh, uh, let me let me go to the. Uh, a big few a su uh, account summary is a big one with six or seven applets. Okay, there's account summary. Uh, let me let me go to a specific account because that has quite some data there. This one, yeah, sample account. So, so uh, one thing you want to do always is help about view, right? And help about view. If I do it in, I, I do it in. Uh, let me go. Quite a big view in in web tools first. That's the workflow process editor. Maybe you never opened about view in that one, but it's really ugly. <laughs> it has like 19 applets or so. Um, but you see, it, it's barely readable. Now it's like all the applets in one block. And that's that's about view vanilla. I never really liked that. So now about view is pretty fied by DevPops. That's about time, no? as <laughs> the title says now. And also adds the 
uh, clickability. So you can right click and save it to your clipboard. You know, like that applet name. Let's see. I right click it. It's now in my clipboard. So don't have to worry about your, you know, selecting text or whatever. And when you left click it, you show the workspace history. So let's try a business component account. There's probably some workspace history. And the workspace history, now I'm in the application. So I can do two things. I can first select the workspace. I want to I have to click that. And then do fast inspect in the application. So basically load that workspace and reload the view, like open and inspect. That's, that's an existing DevPops feature and it's also open in web tools now. So let's see if that works. <laughs> yeah. So no, I'm not moving my mouse, I'm not touching my keyboard. It queries the workspace and navigates to the object. That was, uh, that's a business component. Yeah, right. The account business component should come up once it has done the reloading part. So I'm not sure if this actually is much faster than, than doing it manually. Uh, business component, account, there you go. Okay, <laughs> took a while to get there, but it's in the correct workspace. So the one I selected here, and I, I see all the changes made in that workspace as well. So that's uh, about view in, with DevPops 23, you have that capability. Okay, uh, let me check. Let me check the uh, the list. So we have seen the drill down from the dashboard. We have see, seen open business service from the workflow editor. We've seen the script editor button, change records, three applet view navigation, about view. We just saw saw that. We saw the quick navigation for all objects. Okay, those tiny little things. Um, there's the, the pretty banner. So uh, what's the pretty banner? That's when you, well, click prettyfy banner or enable it. It's Now it's just going to, well, be pretty with, with colors. It's a, it's a very simple uh, randomized color theme for the, for the application banner and uh, web tools does it too. So just, you know, okay, does DevPops load it? Weird color means DevPops is loaded. I, I used some redwood backgrounds in the past. I retired them. So that's just a pretty banner now. No, no redwood anymore. And another demo is um, custom style for dialogues. You might have noticed that's more in the styling department. Those pop-ups that we see, they are the jQuery dialogues, but they have a, they have their own class, and so the CSS kicks in and uh, gives them a more modern look and feel than the, the regular jQuery dialog in Siebel looks, for example, like uh, about view does. Yeah, black and white with the green button. So that's a demo you can, well, it's jQuery basically, you can add a class and then of course you have to inject some CSS uh, to modify the colors and whatnot. And, oh yeah, the, the last one I've been working on is the, um, well, I'll just show you what it is. <laughs> you tell me if it's useful or not. So I'm in, I'm in this uh, account summary view, a big view with a lot of data, six list applets, one form applet. Um, so users would probably, Sometimes users would like to print that, right? And unfortunately, Oracle has removed the uh, quick print that, that was working with a kind of HTML stuff. So you, you're now confined to the browser print capabilities. If I print this view, it's never going to be really useful because the data is truncated. Uh, etc. So, yeah, it might be okay-ish for some views, but for most views, there's you see the list applet data 
is truncated because the column is not wide enough. So you would have to change all the columns first, etc. You're probably never happy with the result if you print that. So I saw this in a demo um, that, of, of course, what, what would you guys do if you say the, custom, the, the use case, the, the users, the end users want the printing capability that gives them all the data they currently see? Well, what's your first? You mean by reporting? They can do BI reports. You can create a, you can create a BI publisher report if you have BI publisher that looks exactly like the few, <laughs> and but the, the data is is prettier, right? And it, so that's of course, but that's quite a lot of work, you know. Create a report, yeah, yeah. And templates, and testing, and all that stuff. Uh, what if the the requirement is let's trim down the requirement? It's just I want to print what's currently visible in the few, but it should be pretty. It should be really visible and printable. So you can with JavaScript, of course, you can just extract the data or even chunks of HTML and write it to a new tab and print that tab. So that's what I did here with the with the surprise me feature. <laughs> Is it's very quick. It's, it's not BI Publisher. Yeah, BI Publisher can do a lot more. I don't want to replace it, <laughs> but it's very quick because data is already there. You could imagine fetching additional data using a business service or REST. And uh, there's even that, a, that means this function works for all the screens and applications, or you have to build this view for each uh, no, it takes, uh, applet and screen. It takes the HTML that's currently available. So it works, in theory, works for any view. It might not be pretty for every view, but uh, so, so let's see what it looks when you when I click that print icon. That luxury icon, of course, goes into print mode. And uh, yeah, it's not perfect, but it's, the data is readable. It's way better than the the other one it's yeah, it's true. better than what you get from the browser print and on the on the view right and that's the point it's something that's easily achievable with a few lines of code you take the data that's already there take the html uh, let's let's try a different view like account opportunities of course it works best for parent child views there's no data okay do we have some data contacts maybe must have some contacts there Ah, come on. Okay, this guy, they have some contact. So yeah, so parent child is ideal because you have the form and you have a list. Oh, let's try it again. Yeah, it's okay. It takes the form. It, it rearranges the form. It's, it's a flex layout and it takes the HTML, it takes the table from the, from the grid, from the list applet grid. So, yeah, and it also looks quite neat. So, yeah, that's a cool function. Yeah, it's nothing I would, let's say, put in front of a user right now. It, it requires a lot more work <laughs> to make it really pretty. And they, they will complain that's not all, I, they can't see all the data that's in the record set. You know, if, the, if you have 100 contacts, you only see 10, all that kind of stuff. But still, it's, uh, let's let's try let's try for you let's try the more info that's typically very big form applet that probably looks awful but let's see yeah <laughs> it looks awful okay so there you see you see the you, you still need a lot of work there for it's not it's not for every view it's like 60 percent of the views would probably look good but the rest would need more work it's it's just a demo I came up with, uh, um, and the demo I saw was very slick. It was really a CSS, you know, it was perfect. It was looking like a report, <laughs> but that's that's not my point. The point is you can grab whatever you have and write it somewhere else in a tab and prettify it with some some style sheet. Okay, so. Uh, speaking of style sheets, yeah, there's this dark mode, which existed for a while. So there's a CSS file that comes with DevPops and probably goes a little bit overboard. So it's very dark, but <laughs> Siebel in dark mode, why not? 
So you can toggle this back. Okay, sorry for that. So see, playing around with CSS, of course, that's always interesting. Uh, right, so I think that was the whole uh, the whole demo of what, what's planned in DevPops. Um, there was the promise being made for today to give you a sneak preview of all that. So if you if you want to talk about any of this to get into Yeah, I just have a, maybe a dumb question, but so uh, DevPops have uh, backward comp compatibility or you can use the 23.1 with the 23.1 Zeebon tools version. Uh, no, or no. How it, does that work? It's definitely backwards compatible. Let's say most of, I would say Zeebon 20 and higher is, is safe to, mm. to, to demonstrate. So let's just say you can use the Zeebon 20.8 version yes. with the DevPops 23.1. Yes, yes, because okay, it's- That's, that's it's, great news. It, it's just using simple open UI. Uh, you have seen the, well, you have seen the navigation to a, a, a workflow editor. If you don't have the workflow editor in web tools, that of course wouldn't work, right? So some features might be dependent with, with on that. What on a, version did the workflow editor came workflow to editor, Zeeble, uh, um, web tool? Twin, it was after 21.4, 20 20. if I'm not okay. mistaken. Yeah, twenty one point four, I guess. Or was it? Oh no, that's a simulator. I think it's twenty dot twenty dot eleven around around twenty dot eleven. The workflow editor came, and then the workflow simulator came in twenty one point four. Um, yeah. So again, some features might not be in available in very old versions of Siebel, but still, most of the stuff. Uh, most of those features. So th that's just a version number of DevPops, really. Uh, I'm using the same pattern as Siebel, but it's not required to have Siebel up to date for DevPops. Yeah, thanks for the info. Mm -hmm. And yeah, please keep that in mind. I, I can't stress it enough. It's dangerous code. It could really mess up your Siebel and that's... It's just a demonstration and you can, you can take the code and use it in your own customizations. Uh, Anyone is using this in a live uh, project or? Uh, I hope not. Just... <laughs> I okay. hope not because it's like really, really illegal uh, from a support point of view. But I know of some customers who use some of the code in their own, in their own customizations. That's that's the goal to 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 have a working demo of the code, but then you take the code and put it in your own customizations. You know, that's that's the ideal. If you if you if you feel like you want you want to know more about DevPops, uh, we can always have a session together um, with with your your development team, and we install it once and see how it how it works with your Siebel, <laughs> and I can show. I can I can help you get started basically with yeah that's yeah but I guess I can just uh, play around with this yeah. on my own first so the GitHub mm -hmm. repository is open for everyone it's or it's open source it? yeah yeah it's open source I'll, I'll put okay. it in the yeah. chat I'll, I'll put it I have put the URL in the chat so you can grab it from there thanks thank mm -hmm. you okay. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's it. It was a very, uh, very private, <laughs> very intimate Civil Friday on the last Friday of the year. Uh, so if you have anything else, I'm happy to, just happy to jump around and discuss. I don't have any more questions. Thanks for this session. It was yeah. super useful for me. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Balint. Yeah. Yeah, as always, it's, it was it's super useful for me too, Alexander. Okay, thanks, Gonzalo. And uh, yeah, wish mm. wish you guys a happy new year. Stay safe and um, see you see you next year. <laughs> yep, same to you, okay, Alexander. Yeah, see you next year. Happy new year. Bye. -bye.